It's time for another pack T test, and today we're going to be shooting a pair of 147 grain 9mm. This is Buffalo Bore Subsonic 147 and the Gold Dot G2 147. You know, it's, it's kind of superfluous to say that this is um, subsonic. I don't think I've seen a single 147 grain factory ammo that's not subsonic, but okay, be that as it may. That's what they call it. They call it subsonic heavy, standard pressure, low flash bullet right here from Buffalo Bore. And then of course, the Spear Gold Dot G2. Now the difference between the G2 and the uh, traditional Gold Dot, the kind of famous Gold Dot, is that this has an elastomer insert in the hollow point that is designed to keep it from clogging and yet allow it to expand. We're going to see how that goes. Now this is actually a very interesting bullet because it was selected by US SOCOM, 147 grain bullet, selected by US SOCOM. You might remember, and I did a pack t test on this, that the US Army had selected another 147 grain. That ammo was being produced by Winchester. We went through the whole test. It's considered a plus P plus nine millimeter round. Check that one out if you're interested in it. Now this one is adopted by US SOCOM and as far as I know, particularly put into use by the Marine Corps. We're going to see how this stacks up against this. And the winner of this head-to-head -head competition moves forward and will be in another competition against the Federal HST-124 grain traditional bullet, lead core mushrooming type of bullet. Now let's tell, let me tell you all about the PAC-T test. PAC-T is an acronym, precision, accuracy, consistency, and terminal performance. Terminal performance is the last thing I'm going to shoot, and that's in this 20% NATO gel block right over here from a distance of seven yards. We're going to see how well it performs, and that's a very important part of this test. The first part of the test is going to be shot right there on that bullseye target or set of bullseye targets. I'll be shooting the buffalo bore first, then the gold dot from a distance of 15 yards off the bench. Precision, it's the extreme spread of that five-shot group. Accuracy is the bullseye score. Consistency comes from my lab radar chronograph. We're going to look at the um, standard deviation of muzzle velocities, and I bet every one of them is going to be subsonic. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. That's right, five rounds and we're clear with the Buffalo Boar. I'm gonna load up the Spear Gold Dot G2. Switching to the bullseye on the right, five rounds, Gold Dot G2. That's our five. You know, I was watching all of these rounds. Um, well, I wasn't watching every one of them on the chronograph, but whenever I glanced at it, uh, yeah, they are all subsonic ones. I looked at it, at least. 
you already saw those results and you've seen the results on the paper. Time now, switch over to the ballistic gelatin for our terminal ballistic testing. Well, that went right where I wanted it to. All right, so this first bullet is the Buffalo Bore 147 grain at about 14 inches. You know, after I fired that, I said, uh-oh, it did not expand. Failure to expand, it must have clogged going through that um, Carhartt jacket and the tooling leather. Nothing too difficult. Lots of other bullets have done just fine with that. This one clogged, and so I said, well, if the Gold Dot G2, if it simply expands, it'll win this test. But Look what happened. You saw some of that. There it is. Into the second gel block. About 18 and a half inches of total penetration. It also clocked. That elastomer tip did not fix the problem. That was a problem with gold dots. They tended to clog up. And very unfortunately, the problem persists. Some interesting and I'll say surprising results. You know, when I saw the new G2 Gold Dot, I thought, okay, I bet they have finally fixed that problem with the Gold Dot, which was clogging. We saw clogging with the 124 grain Gold Dot, and one of the reasons why I have kind of shied away from the legendary Gold Dot bullet. But let's go ahead and step through all of these results beginning at the beginning. That is the bullseye target fired at 15 yards. First one we're looking at here, buffalo bore. You know those first three shots landed so close to one another, really doing a nice job. But then the fourth shot, it pulled. Was that me? Well, I also shot a warm-up, five shots offhand from a distance of seven yards. That's why I recorded the Mantis X10 results, and I'll throw this out right here. This is the five-shot group from that session. We'll talk more about the Mantis X recoil meter results in just a little bit. But overall, the, um, the group was a three quarters of an inch, actually a little bit less than that, 0 0.745 of an inch with 42 points uh, on the bullseye, zero, obviously, in the bull. And I will note again that this bullet was not zeroed for my HKVP9. If I had zeroed it, it would have scored even better, as you're seeing here. Consistency of our muzzle velocities, single digits, 5.3 feet per second. That is excellent. Now let's take a look at the bullseye target for the Spear Gold Dot G2. Um, still a pretty nice group, not as good as the uh, Buffalo Bore, 0.829 of an inch for that five shot group, 38 points, zero in the bull uh, again, uh, and um, if I had zeroed my pistol for this, again it would have scored a whole lot better. Consistency of these muzzle velocities, 12.6 feet.
feet per second and just like the Buffalo bore uh, I did shoot this to get the recoil meter results and here is the results of that um, little target that I was shooting offhand from seven yards. Now precision, accuracy and consistency in all cases the win goes to the Buffalo bore. I've been talking a little bit about the recoil meter results, how shootable are both of these rounds. I'll say right up front, I had some problems getting recordings with the Buffalo bore. So everything that you're seeing here, unknown, unknown, that's correct. I could not get an average. Subjectively, I'll say it didn't feel any different, hardly any different from the gold dot. So uh, let's focus now on the results from the gold dot G2 bullet. Very nice recovery time, less than half a second and quite a bit faster than the CCI Blazer Brass. Muzzle rise though was slightly higher. Now we're only talking really about two degrees different between the gold dot and the CCI Blazer Brass. But both of these rounds are shootable and comfortable for me to shoot. My advice then, recommendation is if you can handle and if you can shoot well that standard CCI Blazer Brass, you can handle these as well. Nothing too terribly different. Now let's look at the terminal ballistic results. Again, starting with the Buffalo bore. The exact measurement that I got on that just before I cut it out of the ballistic gel block was 13.875 inches, um, 13 and 7 eighths of an inch. The bullet did not shed any weight, so 100% weight retention, that is also a very good thing. The diameter of the extracted bullet was exactly the same as the bullet before it was fired. Failure to expand. No points or no significant points gained by the um, uh, expansion factor part of this scoring system. Now don't get me wrong, this is not the absolute end of the world for a uh, terminal uh, or everyday carry personal defense bullet because that bad guy is at least perforated by this bullet. However, lethality is dramatically increased when those bullets expand and when they mushroom. Okay, So that is why there is a scoring, um, a bonus if you want to call it that, um, scoring category for expansion, percent expansion, and even more importantly is the actual expansion. So it did not do great here and as I look at this bullet I can see a little bit it looks like some Carhartt jacket stuck in there. That's probably what jammed it up, what clogged it up. And by the way, uh, Buffalo Board does not make their own bullets so I was curious, or I am curious, who is making this bullet, and I think, I think I know. I reload some of my practice 9mm with the Hornady XTP 124 grain, and boy, this design sure does look similar. I think that is what they are using, but I'm not absolutely certain of that. Let's draw our attention now to the gold dot and its terminal ballistic results. We saw even more penetration. It zipped right through the first block, 16 full inches, and two more inches into the second block, 18 inches of total penetration. That's okay, but it's getting a little bit high, and in fact, following this modified FBI protocol in 20%, ballistic gelatin, it's going to lose some points uh, in that way, in that regard. This bullet retained all of its weight. We saw that it failed to expand, did not expand at all. This G2 bullet still has the elastomer tip on it. And so that's, that's really unfortunate. Not making any excuses for this, but um, I do not see this 
uh, as an improvement, unfortunately, to the, the traditional or standard gold dot bullet. When it's all said and done, Buffalo Boar Bullet scored 270 points, while the Gold Dot G2 scored 170 points. Across the board, even though the Buffalo Boar uh, round did not um, expand, but across the board, Buffalo Boar wins the precision, accuracy, consistency, and clearly the terminal performance. But it's not great results. The temporary wound channel was pitiful, pathetic, anemic in both cases, nothing too impressive at all. Um, kind of got lucky, I would say, that it actually went up against an even worse bullet. This bullet, the Buffalo Boar Round, is going to be put up against a real heavy hitter uh, in our next um, video in this series. It's going to be going up against the Federal HST in an even more difficult challenge. So, I'm interested to hear what you think about these two bullets. I'm particularly interested uh, in your thoughts on the U.S. SOCOM selection of the Gold Dot G2. It did not do any better than the Winchester M1153 that re we reviewed last year. Both of them kind of so-so bullets. I'm interested to hear your take on that or any other questions you might have. I'll try to answer them if I can. Thanks a bunch for watching.